Welcome to Food Aesthetics Barcelona podcast number six. What is it in Spanish? Número seis. <laughs> <laughs> seis in Finnish means stop. Like T-O-P? Top? Huh? No. Top. Stop. Ah, S-T-O-P. S-T-O-P. Ah. <laughs> Food Aesthetics Barcelona podcast number stop. <laughs> But we ain't but, stopping. But, but, we ain't stopping. But say it in Finnish. Says. No, 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 no. Like in Finnish, say Food Aesthetics Barcelona podcast number six. Ah. Food Aesthetics Barcelona podcasti numero cusi. Wait, so why do you say, say six is stop? No, because says in Spanish. Oh, okay, okay. I got it now. Yeah. Like says. Says in Spanish. Says means stop in Finnish. Like says There's is so a word in Finnish. There's so many languages now. I'm so confused. <laughs> what are we talking about? Anyway, welcome back to our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Today is a very special edition. Well, no, not really. But we have a lot to talk about. Yes, yes, we do. <laughs> but first, we're going to start with the the guide. Yes, we, we've been been working on unwind our guide about Villa de Gracia, mm -hmm. our neighborhood, that we will release very soon. <laughs> like in around a month, it should be ready. Yeah. But it's going well. Super well. What do you think, Eva? I love it. I, I already know that it's going to be amazing. And that's it? No, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like... It's like part of our daily lives all the time. So I just I just feel like it's so normal to do it every day and think about it every day. But I'm really, really happy. Seriously, it's like um, the more we're working on it, the more it makes sense. Because the people that we've been working with, they're amazing. And the things that they do are amazing. So people should know about these amazing things. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent, Eva. I agree. No, but we've been going to more places mm -hmm. that we want to include into the guide. And the thing is that we have been exploring mostly places that are in the center of Gracia, well, mm -hmm. Villa de Gracia, our neighborhood. <clears throat> And we haven't really checked places that are further up north in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And we, we went to this place like a few nights ago called Gatamala. Mm -hmm. And it's an amazing bar, restaurant. It's super small. But what's the special thing about it? Imagine, like, have you been in a restaurant and when you leave, you get a hug? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I was, was thinking about the hug, but I was thinking about the tapa, the free tapa. <laughs> oh, yeah, but I was thinking about the hug. This yeah, is like the, a, the, the difference. The thing is that <laughs> at this bar... <laughs> At, at, at this bar, like bar restaurant, there's mm -hmm. like this woman who's in charge of uh, like, I don't know, like assigning tables to people, mm -hmm. no? And she's super nice. She's this older woman. Mm -hmm. And when we were leaving, <laughs> she was like, oh, wh where are you from? And we were like, oh, Mexico and Finland. And she started talking to us like, oh, yeah, there were some Finnish people, no? Mm -hmm. I know. <laughs> but, but I don't know. She was like, like someone... Like it was like she was part of a fa of a family and I know. they had invited us for dinner. And then she was like, "Oh, I'm so glad you liked everything. It's so cool that you came." And then she gave us a hug. I know it was amazing. Like <laughs> I I and it was a nice, warm hug. Like it wasn't even like awkward hug. It was like, "Ah, oh, you're now you're part of the family." Like when you. You went to the restaurant. You know, I, like. I, I think there's few places in Barcelona where you get a, a hug at the end of your meal. <laughs> well, but aside from that, the food is really good. Yeah. It's super cheap. Yeah. And with each drink, you get, well, with each caña or with each beer, you get a free tapa. That's, a, which that's like... It's it, unheard of in yes, Barcelona. Yes. <laughs> Because usually here, like, you have to pay for everything. Yeah, of course. It's not like other parts of Spain. I mean, sometimes when you get a beer, <clears throat> you can have, like, some, some nuts chips. or... Crisps. Wow, well, olives would be, like, whoa, whoa. Yeah, or you, you get, get some free nuts. olives, but... Yeah. No, but in this one, you get, like, a real tapa. That, that, and it was really good. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, like, 
what I was super amazed of, like one of the free tapa, like you can even have like a little fried egg on top. It was like a... Like a with the yo runny yolk. Quail, quail egg. Yeah. Um, and, it was and like a small egg on like you, bread. They really <laughs> had to, you know, like make an effort for the tapa. It wasn't even like a sad tapa. You just, you know, <laughs> throw it someone. <laughs> no, yeah, I agree. Like not only was it free, but it was good quality. Yes. No, that, that place was amazing. Like we were very surprised. It's it's really small, but it's really nice. And the hug. I'm just and the hug. About, and the hug. But yeah, this is going into our guide definitely. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I highly recommend going there, and it's really nice because it's like nice small place, like you it kind of intimate, and you know, it's really nice. Yeah, we were also going to review it, like normal review on mm -hmm. the blog, and then on the guide, and then everywhere. <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, um, I mean, we, we've been to other places mm -hmm. doing some research for the guide, but this was, well, this has been the highlight of the past two weeks, I guess. Mm -hmm. No, that was really good. Um, another place we went to that we were interested about for the guide is this place called La Pubilla, mm -hmm. which is like, well, it has breakfast, which is kind of odd to find here. <laughs> Having like a good, good breakfast, because usually there's more like brunch places in Barcelona, because mm -hmm. brunch is so trendy. Yeah, of course. And I mean, I understand, like, that's for people waking up early. <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, we woke up pretty early on a Saturday to mm -hmm. go to this place. This is also in Villa de Gracia. And yeah, it was good as well. I mean, I don't think we should talk about it a lot because we haven't reviewed it yet. Exactly. But it was good. Yeah. You know? But one of the pictures from the place is on our Instagram. I had some <laughs> eggs and they were amazing. <laughs> eggs with sobrasada. Sobrasada is like uh, liquid chorizo. <laughs> I don't know. I, it's so funny because first I heard the word sobrasada and I was like, what? Like, sobrasada. What is that? And, and I don't know. My Finnish head, it's just like, sobrasada sounds like gibberish <laughs> <laughs> but could it mean something in finnish no i don't know well anyway that's another enlighten place. me if, if, if you're listening and you know <laughs> finnish <laughs> that's another place we went to recently that goes to the guy mm. and well this is a breakfast place yeah yeah um so yeah mostly we've been working on the guy yep it's been it's been good and we're also working on an interview we're opening up a new <gasps> interview section well and it's part of an article section but we're gonna do this interview and i think it's gonna be very interesting as well it's secret as well <laughs> <laughs> everything's secret now yeah just secrets and secrets here. These, these are just previews for everything yeah <laughs> but there's a lot going on yeah we're working on a lot of stuff and also eva got a new camera Ooh, i'm so excited i can't even like yesterday night I couldn't even sleep. I was just like all the time going through my new photos and, and uh, putting them on Lightroom and trying out new things. And I'm so excited. Like our photos are going to change a little bit, but at the same time, I want to keep the nice style that we have, you know, like keep it real. <laughs> keep it real. No, seriously. No, yeah, like, uh same style or similar style, similar better style. quality. Yeah, similar no? style, but better quality. But I, I want to keep the food photos like realistic. Not, I'm not going too crazy with them because in the end, it's the most important thing when you're doing reviews and all of that. I still think that the photos, <clears> like they shouldn't mislead you, misguide you. Yeah, yeah. mislead you, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. To something else. Yeah, keep it real. Keep it real, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, because, I mean, we have uh, most of the equipment necessary. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've had it so far, most of the equipment necessary for our blog, yeah. for, <laughs> for taking pictures, for our podcast and everything. But we really needed a, a good camera mm -hmm. that takes good video also. <laughs> exactly. And now we have it. We have everything set up. Because now we're going to have also YouTube videos. Wow. What? <laughs> but it's secret as well. <laughs> now you Only know. secrets here. Yeah. But yeah, YouTube videos, interviews, the guide coming up, new reviews, what? 
<laughs> what? Yes. Food aesthetics goes. What, what was goes the word? Wild. Wild, <laughs> and also it's more like. Um, how how would you say? Bu- bu- the the newspaper kind of thing. How do you say it? Newspaper. No, like a bu- bu- like. A publication. Yes. Oh yeah, we're turning into a big media company. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm kidding. We're, st- we're still two people. Yes. With the help of our friends. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's how it is. That's how it is. It's nice. Yeah, of course. <laughs> okay, let's move on. <laughs> uh, but anyway, like this is a special edition because we have a lot to complain about now. <laughs> oh wow! Well, no, not to complain about, but no, it's like I I'm already laughing because I've seen like the pre reactions of Rafa um, reacting to those videos, and and seriously, it's it's one of the funniest thing ever like that's why also we need a camera because i would love to record <laughs> this podcast so that you could see how rafa is reacting to these videos it's wow yeah i i, I get pretty angry yeah but at the same time it's good <laughs> like you have strong opinions you have strong opinions that's good well of course but it's because like you see these people <laughs> who, who come and and wreck <laughs> everything um but the other day, how did this start? Oh, yeah, yeah. So we were watching our favorite channel, Italia Squisita. Mm-hmm. We found out it's Squisita, not Squisita. Oops. Because our Italian friend corrected. So Italia Squisita, our favorite channel, mm-hmm. <laughs> posted a new video um, where they were, well, as always, they have like three chefs and they criticize the most famous YouTube recipes of certain Italian recipe. And now they were um, criticizing, uh, Amat- I don't know how to say it, Amatraciana. <laughs> Please don't kill me. <laughs> but it's this uh, pasta that uses uh, guanciale, which is the ingredient you find in carbonara. In carbonara, yeah, like the pork cheek. Uh, but they make it with tomato sauce. So it's very interesting. It's very good as well. So, <laughs> so the chefs were criticizing these uh, videos of the Amatraciana, mm-hmm. or however you say it. <laughs> and in, in, in one of those videos was this uh, video from a guy called Frankie Selenza, <laughs> which is, I don't know, this, this weird, I don't know, he's like a chef, not a chef. He's very odd. He's this guy. He's from the US, and he makes videos for a uh, channel called Taste Made, mm-hmm. and I, I don't really know what to say about him. Like, we started watching him, and we didn't understand if he's <laughs> he was being serious or not because his his videos are not really like I don't know they're not really good. Like the instructions are not clear. No, like he doesn't know what he's doing. But I don't know if he pretends like he's not he doesn't know what he's doing or he actually doesn't. But he plays this kind of like cute character, <laughs> like, oh, look at me. I made a mess. Oh, no. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I kind of hated him <laughs> at first. I don't, I don't hate him anymore. My feelings have changed. <laughs> but I think we should play just like a, 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 one of his videos <clears throat> of Frankie Selenza, where he explains how to make like a beef quesadilla, which... I don't know. It's some American thing. Because <coughs> it's definitely not a normal Mexican quesadilla. No, it, it, no, no. But, okay, let, let's just play a bit to, to see what, what Frankie <laughs> is going to teach us today. And it's like 3 a.m., you're rolling into the apartment. What do you have? You've got a panini press. Maybe you've got a uh, hot cast iron skillet. But I know what you want. You want gooey cheese. You want crispy beef. You want this completely non-traditional beef quesadilla, which is delicious. So let's make it together now. Okay, so he's he's saying like this is food for drunk people, right? Yeah, three you know? a.m. But he says, okay, it's non-traditional quesadilla. I mean, if you could see this image, it looks like I don't know. Well, it's it doesn't ve- look like you're making this. <laughs> it looks like a burger, but between tortillas. No, At three a.m. Yeah, yeah, but this is <laughs> not something that I could I could couldn't possibly do. Uh, 3 a.m. Oh, right, yeah, because he's saying, like, this is drunk food. This yeah, drunk food. food, no, 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 don't, like, this is, like, also, like, sa- for your safety, 
like not burn the house. Like, wow, that looks like. Well, let's continue with the 3 a.m. crispy beef quesadilla. Let's see. <laughs> Get a cast iron pan hat. Take some ground beef, flatten it out real good. We're making like a smash Shake Shack type burger here. <laughs> okay, yeah, so it's like a burger. <laughs> a lot bit of salt. Not a little bit, a lot bit. Which is obviously the opposite of a little bit. <laughs> All right, black pepper. Jokes. A little bit. Man. So right now, he's just like, <laughs> like he's just like, <laughs> he's just tapping the meat. Yeah, he's like patting the meat like a yeah, little yeah. dog now, like boop, boop, yeah, boop, patting. Boop, boop. Sorry, <laughs> or tapping. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, like what? But I mean, if you look at the video, like he looks like he's high as well. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, like he, he's definitely already well. Yeah, high, not drunk. Like, like he's huh? playing this like, oh, I'm, I'm kind of a bit drunk, a little bit high character. <laughs> 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 Look at me. <laughs> let's let's pat the meat. Ding, ding. Cast iron really hot because I want to get a crispy crust on the beef. We want the Maillard reaction to happen. The Maillard reaction, reaction is a lovely thing that happens when sugars begin to caramelize. <laughs> what? What? While the meat's still raw, you push down on the meat, you don't lose any juice, and you're <laughs> maximizing the contact. I don't know, now he's starting to get, <laughs> like, I mean... <laughs> Caramelized. I don't know what he's saying. Reaction. Like, why is he taking a reaction? Isn't this for drunk 3 a.m. people? <laughs> like, seriously, and he's pressing the meat on the pan, like, hardcore. Okay, so we know that he presses the meat for a while. Let, let, let's go a bit forward. So now, okay, he's growing his tortillas. He's putting cheese on it. Let's let's see what he says about the cheese. It also gives a delicious gooey texture that pretty much most people on the planet desire. <gasps> All right, a little uh, little bit of jalapeno. Just oh, no, no, you know, no. a couple thin slices here. We'll do the choo choo. <gasps> okay, some what? Some what? jalapeno like that. So now, in the meantime, also we can get our quesadilla pan again. All right, how's the beef look? Like he's already using two pans. <laughs> like at on the high same heat time, at the same time. 3 a.m. Don't do it. No, two pans, two hot pans. Then no, should be at like, the same time. What, what not to do at 3 a.m.? No, it, definitely <laughs> not. Home. Like this is, this is dangerous. Like everybody who has been cooking at 3 a.m. knows that there's a slightly risky... Uh, chance of burning your house. <laughs> burning your house down. Yeah, of course. Like, Man, no. Like, his microwave. Kitchen. His kitchen dream. is full of wood. Like, it's wood. Everything. Like, look at that. I haven't seen that much wood in a kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> like, you some... I don't know. Oh, that's like a Finnish cottage. <laughs> anyway, let's continue. No, not really. Oh, wow, it's burned. Yeah, the meat is shrinking. Things are contracting. Moisture is being lost. <laughs> the meat is Diander, shrinking. The meat was larger than the quesadilla. Now it is smaller. So make the meat bigger than you think. So it's got a nice Maillard reaction now. Really nice crust. I was going to say, like, what is the sense of humor? Is, like, I, I know that he's trying to be funny or something. Or pretending like he... I don't, I don't understand anything. I don't understand the character. Like, it makes no sense at all. I know. But we were already two and a half minutes into this video, and he's still with the meat. Yeah, he's burning like, the meat. This is, like, I, I've, seen, <laughs> I've seen videos on Instagram, minute-long videos on Instagram, where they teach you how to make, a, like, a cake. And this guy is two and a half minutes into the video, and he's still with the meat. Spe <laughs> speaking about the Mallard reaction or something, I don't even know what he's talking about. Okay, There's some physics going on. Let's see, let's see. Professor Frankie is going to tell us more about, about the meat. Let's see. You can see that um, sugars have happened. Sugars? <laughs> like oh, baby. Like the meat he's burning good. it. Let's can you use the sound? Right hither. Whenever I have a really smoky cast iron pan, I uh, kind of let it hotbox the oven. Cheese goes on top. 
un pochino di Montechia. <laughs> no, he attempted to speak Spanish. He's like... Un pochino de Montechia. But the crazy thing is that you can see that the kitchen is full of smoke. Yeah, that's pretty worrying. <laughs> like, seriously. <laughs> but, but also, like, look, look at... <laughs> like, all the oil he used on the beef. Plus the fat that comes out of the beef. And now he put, well, I mean, that's a big that's chunk a big, of yeah, water. I wouldn't put that much. In, in a pan. Yes. Like, but, I mean, Frankie, in, in, continue <laughs> helping us. Please tell us how to make this 3 a.m. quesadilla. Like that. Butter is mucho importante. <laughs> mucho importante. I'm going to do more pushing. Again, I'm trying to, right now, brown the tortilla. He's just pressing. Now pushing down increases the contact area. Think of like a panini press. That is exactly what we're doing. We are making a total makeshift panini press. I don't think, I don't think he is doing that. I don't think so. Cheese is mucho melted. <laughs> mucho melted. Look at how bubbly it is. Man, that thing looks yeah. disgusting. It's so burnt. What's really it's cool so about this? Burnt. You can get an induction burner in your dorm room and fill the entire dorm with smoke. And make a delicious quesadilla. Let's cut into this late night savior. Man, like that's so much work for the for, for a late night quesadilla. Late night you just put the a tortilla, some cheese in the microwave. Yeah, of course. And salsa, no? And, like uh, Whatever. You find some Tabasco sauce and you got to just... <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, 3 a.m.? You're probably pretty drunk by then. <laughs> no, seriously, like... I highly you recommend... You out of the bar, so... the microwave at 3 a.m. Because you never <coughs> know. Imagine the moment when, you, when you're waking up and... Oof. Yeah, I, I would correct Frankie's recipe and be like... You get home, <laughs> here you are, you're hungry, you grab a plate, <laughs> you get the most terrible flour tortilla <laughs> you can find, put it on the plate, put some cheese in it, it doesn't matter, it can be cheddar, whatever, you're drunk, <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> Fold it, microwave, put it out, you're ready. <laughs> no smoke. No. no. No using two pans at the same time. <laughs> One with burning oil and the other one with butter. Like, like Frankie's out of control. Someone, someone do something. Wait, wait, wait. Save Frankie. And this is the end. This is the end. This is the end. Oh, baby. Can you see the ooey gooey? Little pico de gallo over there? I say you even, you even sour cream it. No, he has pico de gallo even. Did he make it also at 3 a.m.? No, what happened? <laughs> Chopping 3M? No. It's juicy. It's just got a little bit of spice from the jalapeno. Creamy from the cheese. Crunchy from the Maillard reaction on the beef. And then also from the, the corn Maillard tortilla. Reaction. Which has been What's that reaction? Has a bit of butter on the pan. There's nothing gourmet about it, but it is delicious. And sometimes you like a non gourmet delicious thing. That is what this is. You're welcome. Man, like. <laughs> Sometimes you like a non-gourmet delicious thing. Like I think my life is non-gourmet. <laughs> <laughs> it seems Frankie's always eating at Michelin star restaurant or something. But... Wow, Frankie. Well, the thing is like at first I hated him, but now I think he I mean I think he's an idiot, but he's okay. I'm confused. I don't understand what he's going for. And like th th these instructions are terrible. Like Especially for a 3 a.m. You would really burn your house if you follow this recipe. But at the, the thing is, like, someone's gonna follow it. <laughs> at 3 a.m. <laughs> just just because they think it, Please, it, it's funny, no. you know? No. No. Oh, I had written, lol, this is garbage. <laughs> <laughs> I left the comment. Okay, but in the topic of quesadillas, uh, it turns out that our, our favorite YouTuber. <laughs> oh, wow. Made a quesadilla as well. I don't know, it's Cinco de Mayo. You know, because in the US they celebrate Cinco oh, de yeah, Mayo. Yeah, Cinco de Mayo. So I'm sure that's why he's, he's. Yeah, of course. But like, Rafa, can you enlighten me a little bit? What is a quesadilla before we start? I mean, a quesadilla is a tortilla. 
mm-hmm. and then you put cheese in it and then you fold it and then i don't know you can use a pan to heat it up mm-hmm. i That's mean it, it? It, it depends but what can you put inside i guess i no, if you, you want cho- to make it you, gourmet you, you can choose but usually the important thing is that you have a good tortilla mm-hmm. it can be flour or corn uh, I mean, if you make them, it's better. <laughs> <laughs> then you have some good cheese, and then you have to make some filling if you want, mm-hmm. and some salsa, of course. But I mean, a basic good quesadilla is a tortilla with the cheese and a good salsa, but homemade, homemade salsa. Yeah. I mean, you can make I don't know, like fresh tomato, like salsa. Like mm-hmm. you can actually use like um, blend some mm-hmm. fresh tomatoes. You just wash them. <laughs> first safety first wash them uh you put them in a blender with some <clears throat> jalapeno mm-hmm. um some onion mm-hmm. a tiny little bit of garlic really small if you want mm-hmm. and then of course you need to put uh some seasoning like a cube of vegetable stock or chicken stock salt mm-hmm. pepper that's it that's your salsa so Doesn't that, sound that difficult. With, with, with the cassette, no. So I don't understand. Like Frankie went really far. <laughs> but okay, we're gonna give Frankie a pass because I don't know what he's going for. He's <laughs> a mysterious character. Yes. But now we have a person that we have a problem with <laughs> making quesadillas. Babish. We've talked about this guy before. He's an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and he's so famous. I hate it. Like, four million subscribers. So last time we criticized what? We criticized his salsa recipe, no? Mm, he was the making salsa? the most complicated yeah, it's salsa. Complicated pico de gallo. Yeah, like he added like mango mm. and five kilograms yeah, yeah, of garlic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the garlic, the amount of garlic was insane. So... <laughs> Luckily, he's come out with a new video, and now this is Quesadillas. This just came out April 18, and he's going to tell us... Of course, let's keep in mind that his channel is called Basics with Babish, right? Or, well, so not, this not, is basic. This is basic. So let's, let's see if it's more basic than Frankie. <laughs> <laughs> quesadillas. All right, so let's start by having a talk about cheese. I know I only mentioned Monterey Jack before, but I like to add a little bit of sharp cheddar into the mix for flavor and color. But Monterey Jack is super important because it melts like mozzarella and tastes like a slightly more flavorful mozzarella. Now, of course, we could just do cheese quesadillas, but I like some filling, so let's talk chicken. So, <clears throat> he's adding two types of cheese, right? Mm-hmm. Monterey Jack, it's fine. You know, I didn't eat in a quesadilla before. It's fine. But why does he add cheddar? I don't understand. Like, why is he adding cheddar? Like, the typical orange cheddar <laughs> that you add everywhere. I know. It's for the color. Oh, yeah. He said it's for the <laughs> color, right? Man, why? Like, just, just one type of cheese. That no, is it's fine. The, it's for the Instagram, no? No, but... See, <laughs> seeing orange and, and white in a quesadilla or in whatever makes me want to kill myself. Like, no one has just orange cheese. I mean, there's good cheddars, right? Like aged mm-hmm. cheddars or whatever that you can eat. But this is like, I don't know. Like, maybe this is too strong already. Like, Monterey Jack. I'm already eating this stuff. <laughs> I was having more fun with Frankie, but anyway. Get your texting out of the way before you cover your hands in salmonella, and let's butterfly our chicken breasts. Basically, we're just going to place long cuts down the side of the breast until we can open it up like a book. Then we're going to place them between sheets of plastic wrap and pound them out. Man, he says he's, it's basics, but he, he grabs these kitchen tools that no one has at home. What is he even grabbing? I, I don't have that. What is that, Eva? I have no idea. I never used that one, and I don't think I will never use it. He's grabbing like a meat pressing thing. And seriously, the amount of plastic. I've never seen it in my life. Can we talk about the amount of plastic? Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like, he 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 wastes <laughs> so much food, and so so like he uses materials that are not supposed to be used, and whatever. like Let's plastic about flat and even. Mm-hmm. Nice thin chicken breasts like this cook more quickly and are less susceptible to drying out. But they're pretty bland. So let's talk marinade into our large bowl. Well, we are he's gonna marinate the. The chicken, whatever, boring. Tablespoons of uh, Okay, marinate the chicken. Okay, now he's making the guacamole for the quesadillas. So already, this is not basic. Like, 
we already had to get two types of cheese. We had to butterfly our chicken and, and press it with a thing that he used and he create a marinade. Like, where's the basic now? <laughs> like, man, I already spent probably like more than one hour in the kitchen. <laughs> like, like, why does he call it basics? There's nothing basic about this, man. Like, who does he think he is? Ugh. Okay, now the guacamole. Let's see, babish. Guacamole. <laughs> Ma, how about some of that guac I was talking about? Into a bowl goes the meat, flesh. Actually, I believe it's called a mesocarp. The mesocarps of two ripe avocados, one half of a small red onion, finely chopped, one large jalapeno. Man, a small red onion. That's not small. Look at that onion. That <laughs> onion is big. The mesocarps of two ripe avocados. Look at avocados. that onion. That's a massive <laughs> onion. It's like the size of my head. <laughs> Like, on man, your head that, is that, big. That, that guy doesn't even understand. Like, 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 <laughs> like. Does he think see things differently from people? <laughs> no, no, no. Is, is he, like a. <laughs> can he not tell like what what is small or what is big? Like, like, like so where does he get so this? Is a small onion from? If anyone's curious, just Google quesadilla. Google well on YouTube quesadillas with babish. Binging with babish quesadilla. Well, small onion. Avocados. One half of a small red onion, finely chopped. One large jalapeno, devoid of seeds and veins, if you don't want it to be too spicy. And the last time I made guac on this show, I forgot to add garlic. Very embarrassing. Two cloves of grated he garlic, loves garlic. The juice of one lime, and a good shake of cumin. Like, he loves garlic and doesn't like cilantro. So he's making guacamole with no cilantro, but with garlic. <laughs> I mean, you know, like, everyone can like certain things, but at least... Don't commit the crime of putting garlic in <laughs> your guacamole. No, it's Raw just, garlic. Why would you put garlic in guacamole? Man, the only thing garlic, like, Babish eats is garlic and onion in, like, stupid quantities. So I'm sure no one wants to hang out with him. <laughs> <laughs> he smells like like garlic and, 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 and onion all the time. Like, yeah, but see, see, like, your stomach is not happy. It's because, like, the. It's not proportionate. It makes no sense. Just put like a bit of onion, mm. m maybe a, a fourth of that onion, <laughs> of <laughs> the small thing. onion. Mash that up with a fork and do not forget to season with kosher salt and freshly ground pepper to achieve a basic but killer guacamole. Now it onto negotiating sad. our chicken breasts. We want to cook these as hot and fast as possible. Shake off the excess marinade and sear in a skillet that's been preheated over high heat. <laughs> Basics with Babish. He takes out a thermometer to measure how hot the meat is. I guess in Fahrenheit, because this is American, but whatever. But it's like, this is not basic. I don't think everyone has a thermometer at home. Like, he's supposed to teach people who don't know how to make food. Like, that's his, the whole premise of his stupid channel. <laughs> and look, he takes out a thermometer to measure, like, <laughs> how hot the chicken is. Like, like I don't it's so pretentious. Doing. He's like the woman that we watched the other time, <laughs> the, the burrito woman. Like, you just take out the chicken and cut it, and you're like, oh, is this cooked? Like, you, you can tell if chicken's cooked or not, because if it's <laughs> a bit pink, <laughs> you don't eat it. It has to be white, you know? Well, anyway. Heat flipping once or twice until the internal temperature registers 155 degrees Fahrenheit. That's See? No, 155 no, degrees no, Fahrenheit. Man, no, no one... No, no one, no, 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 like, no one calculates a temperature to make quesadillas. No, 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 like, no, 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 <laughs> no. I can't Just even no. say anything. Look. Then remove, allow to cool a little bit, and slice. And now it's finally time to start assembling our quesadillas. I'm starting with a layer of chicken, followed by some sautéed peppers and onions. Okay, so he sautéed peppers and onions, which mm. he didn't show. So that's an extra twenty minutes. <laughs> So basically, his his basics with Babish quesadilla takes around two hours, but it's not over yet because now he layered the chicken, the peppers that he sauteed on the side, the two <laughs> types of cheese. He's folding the tortilla, and now... And a layer of our cheese mix. You will notice that I'm making half quesadillas. That's just my preferred form factor. However you assemble them, you want... All right. An an another thing that he makes up. He says he's making half a quesadilla. Like, he's simply folding a tortilla. 
filling it with things. So that's a normal quesadilla. That's a normal quesadilla. But in Babish world, <laughs> where the, uh, the small onions are big onions, <laughs> the, the, the quesadillas are half quesadillas instead of being full quesadillas. <laughs> A generous amount of oil in the bottom of your frying pan, I'd say about two to three tablespoons worth. I'm gonna preheat the pan over medium heat for about a minute before dropping them in and letting them almost deep fry in all that oil. Then we're gonna flip after about a minute and a half once they turn beautiful and golden brown. How are you deep frying? How are you deep frying if you put just three tablespoons of oil? That's, that's not, not deep, deep frying. frying. No, that's not deep frying. Uh, but I cannot really, look, 1,800,000 1, views. 62,000 likes. Like, who are these people? It's just a, probably like good marketing techniques. No, no, no. But still, like, you read the comments and a lot of them are like, oh my God, thank you, baby. You saved me. And it's like, there are so many other channels on YouTube that have good instructions for short recipes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that do not include a guy lying his way through the video, just making stuff up. And making oh, everything so difficult. Half like, a quesadilla. Like this is this is this really is half a quesadilla. not basics. Like, <coughs> like I would burn myself probably halfway. <laughs> there. Yeah, he has all this fancy like, like uh, equipment, equipment, all of you that. Know? You know, like, 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 using look, plastic look at, clubs. Look at his kitchen. It's like a restaurant kitchen. <laughs> Man, like, like what is this? Like, it's just a scam. <laughs> He's selling this idea of something that doesn't exist. Like, like if someone in, in their dorm room is going to be cooking this, of course, you're going to burn it down, yes. you know? But I'd rather burn my dorm room down <laughs> listening to Frankie <laughs> than to Babish. At least Frankie knows that like, he's messing around. But Babish, what? Like, who is this guy with his tattoos? Man, it pisses me off so much. Like, tattoos are fine, but it just pisses me off that he has <laughs> showing off his tattoos, you know? Like, I'm this cool guy. I'm this cool guy in the kitchen. <sighs> okay, let's flip the quesadillas. Brown on the first <laughs> side. Let them go for about another minute and a half on the second side and then remove to slice and consume. I like to cut my quesadillas into six even slices, kind of like some kind of Tex-Mex pizza pie and serve with... Man, those are the worst words I've heard in my life. <laughs> A Tex-Mex pizza pie. Why are you making stuff up? <laughs> I cannot even yell into the microphone. Uh, Tex makes pizza, pizza pie. So, okay, Babish, what are we making? Are we making quesadillas? Are we making quesadillas? Like, wh why, why are you switching the names? Like, like, this is basics with Babish. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Tex makes pizza pie. Have you heard of that in your life before? No? A Tex makes pizza pie. Okay, Babish, thank you. Thank you for not teaching us anything. Just the most complicated quesadilla recipe in history. <laughs> we, we should make a feature ever and rank the most and dumbest quesadilla recipes ever. Seriously, no, yeah, that's a good idea. Write it down. Yes. We're, we're, we're putting this into into the in, into our blog. We're gonna make yes the best and the worst quesadilla recipes you can find on YouTube. Yes, and I know this is top one worst. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it took so long. Like, okay. Let's see you. Let's see you eat your stupid pizza pie. Sour cream, guacamole, and salsa. As you can see, even in one of its more advanced forms, quesadillas are pretty damn easy. They just take a little bit of practice to get the heat right, and you want to be generous but not overzealous with the filling so they're not spilling out every time you try to take a bite. Man, he's saying that it takes like practice to get the heat right. Man, oh, no. What are you saying, man? <laughs> this is painful. I cannot watch this anymore. Okay, that's it. Love her. Like, but see, that's what I told you. Like, Frankie was funny. He, he's, he's kind of dumb. But we had fun. But Babish just makes me angry. <laughs> it makes me so angry. <sighs> okay, let's move on. So, anyway, I wanted to show Eva this surprise. Yes, I haven't seen this before. Because the Food Network, another respectable publication, apparently... Mm -hmm. Man, I'm so surprised like uh, about all these big publications uh, just showing people garbage, <laughs> garbage recipes. Mm -hmm. So there's this thing called a frito pie. And fritos, you know what fritos are, right? Mm -hmm. Fritos are like these chips. You know, they're shaped like in like a little U, like this, like, oh. 
yeah. Fritos. Yeah, yeah, Fritos. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I saw this on the Food Network mm -hmm. on their Instagram, and I, I want you to tell me what you think of it. So what is this? <laughs> Look. Oh my God, the music. Fritos. No. Ay. You crush them. Water. Push your salt. That's <laughs> so, disgusting. So what this person just did is they grabbed like a bag of Frito chips, you know, Ooh. put them in a food processor <laughs> with a lot of ingredients. Oh my God, I'm feeling bad. Wait, wait, wait. Let me explain it. No, that's disgusting. Yeah, yeah. But so, so, so this is like a dough. For yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, this person made a dough uh -huh. from the oh. Fritos and uh -huh. kosher salt and all that stuff and made like a base for a pie. <laughs> So imagine using like something like that to make instead of just making a normal that's, that's base like, for a pie. Why would you do that? Like, okay, wait, but wait, wait. It, it gets it gets juicier. So oil, beef. So they're making the the filling, right? Okay, so normal, no, just like an mm, oh, like a beef filling, right? Okay. You like the music, Eva? Ooh, ooh, yeah, ooh, like party. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> now they. <laughs> what is this? It's a monster. So now the base of the frito pie. <laughs> I'm getting chills, like bad chills. It's covered with ground beef, a huge layer of really bad quality ch cheddar cheese, and now lettuce. Boom, let's bring bring the music back. Pico de gallo, jalapeno, guacamole, cheddar, more cheddar, and sour cream. And more fritas on top. <laughs> Look no, at this. No, 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 no. <laughs> Look no, how soggy is that's this. That's terrible. Like this this is disgusting. Okay, but you have to you have to check this out. Like frito pie is actually a recipe, but it's not this. Yeah? Yeah. So look, someone writes. I'm from Texas. We refute the title of this dish. Our frito pie is not a pie. So if you actually Google frito pie, look. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a dish. Look. Ah. I mean, I wouldn't eat it either, but it looks better. It's like um, beans with beef and fritos on top, right? Yeah. Okay. So it's not... It's yeah, like it's, whatever. It doesn't look know? that bad, but it's just like... I mean, it's still using like frito chips, whatever. But I mean, they're they're, they're just like thrown in there. They're not put into a food process. No, no, no. Or... Like I don't know because like the, the, people think that making like the dough <clears throat> is is really really complicated. Like in general, like some like I would like to um, tell people that making the dough is not that difficult like basically if you want to make a pizza dough it's just like salt water um well, but yeast and, you need and, some skills yeah no? some but like in in overall it's just a flour with water and some butter and and that's it and yeah or, or i mean for example for <laughs> this the, type the, of pie the, you, you you could just buy maybe some dough you know yeah and like i mean it, and it's super easy to make like by yourself like seriously but this this is just like it looks disgusting it looks like when you're putting your fork in there or a spoon whatever no, i don't, I don't even, know I don't like know maybe with the spoon because it's like falling apart it's everywhere. so soggy it's, it's disgusting it looks horrible but imagine like food network is probably the most famous no well i mean they have a lot of garbage but no, that that's just terrible but i think for me the shocking thing was I thought this was a made-up recipe by the Food Network, but no, it's an actual <laughs> recipe that they yeah, ruined. Yeah, yeah. They ruined it. <laughs> like someone wrote, "Delete your account." <laughs> no, please, please. So, someone else wrote, "This isn't the frito pie my mama made." <laughs> See, it said frito pie is fritos, chilies, and cheese. Nothing fancy. Yeah, I mean it's kind of like a snack. Yeah. I mean it's a bad snack, but. It's better than what the Food Network offers. But this is the this is the basic problem that like they're making <clears throat> these crazy dishes and all of that that doesn't make sense, and they make it seem like cooking is really 
um, difficult or you need to add a lot of things. Like actually, I had some friends visiting me uh, recently and they were like, they are not that into cooking because it seems like it's a lot of effort. And overall, like we should kind of get out of that image that you need to spend a lot of time in the kitchen. Like yeah. make simple but, dishes. But, but the problem is like, you see these videos like, yes. like Babish, that it's saying that it's simple, but it's so complicated. It's so complicated. <laughs> like I don't make it too complicated. Because then you start hating it because you always fail, you know, like make it make simple things and you can make them really delicious. Like if you use good ingredients, that's it. Yeah, but there's a lot of problems here. <laughs> like you're just scratching the surface, Eva. You're just scratching the surface of this. Look, because we have the issue of that. Of course, they're they're making things more complicated than they should. And it's stupid because people don't feel encouraged to make it, right? <laughs> so, of course, like, for example, this frito pie thing <laughs> is so much work and you need a food processor and it's so stupid, right? But the original frito pie, which is chili, fritos yeah. and beans and, and something else, it's so easy because you can just put everything together, right? Yes. Because also you can buy chili from a can or yeah, I don't know. Course, I don't yeah. know how they eat over there in the US, right? But it's something like that. So, of course, this is just trying to make a fancy version of something that is not fancy and mm. it's unnecessary. So that's problem number one. <laughs> <laughs> this, this food place... This 99 food, problems. <laughs> no, but yeah, like these food publications taking easy recipes and making them complicated. Or like Babish, for example. Mm. Taking an easy recipe, making it complicated. You know, mm. and at the same time telling you that it's easy, so it's messing with your head, right? Yeah, is this easy or is this difficult? <laughs> exactly. So that's problem number one. <laughs> <laughs> the problem number two with these big publications <laughs> is that they're taking recipes that already exist. I think we talked about this last time. Mm. They, they take recipes that already exist, they make them, and they rename. Oh, the yeah, recipes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. We, we For example, that them. you have yeah, chilaquiles yeah, yeah. and yeah, then yeah. They, they, they say like, Nacho surprise party <laughs> fiesta. Yes. <laughs> That's probably number con two. Con chili con carne. <laughs> and then problem number three <laughs> is that a lot of these publications as well are making recipes and they're calling them something else. Yeah. You know, that could be seen recently. It was this account that I was looking at yesterday. What was it? Bon Appetit. Bon Appetit. Mm. Bon Appetit, Mac. So Bon Appetit, <laughs> another massive publication, posted a picture of these two pieces of, of meat. I mean, it looks like meat mm -hmm. with some vegetables. Yeah, like breaded, no? Yeah, 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 breaded meat. So when you first see it, what is it? Like, what do you think this is? I think it's a breaded chicken with, is that rucola? Well... I don't know. Something. But, <clears throat> but do you know the name of, the, of this recipe? No. Like, like in Mexico, we call it Milanesa. Oh, yeah. From Milan. Told, yeah, and I remember in, that. in Italy, it's one. called the same, right? Mm? But it's also kind of like the schnitzel from oh, Germany. Yeah, yeah, in Germany. Right? So they have different versions. Okay. Mm? So <laughs> Bon Appetit Mac wrote about this. I mean, I just see it. I'm like, this is Milanes. Milanesa, mm, whatever. Yes. And Bon Appetit Mag wrote on the Instagram caption, Saltimboca is actually the origin for the phrase. It's what's on the inside that counts. That's because this chicken is wrapped in prosciutto and sage and then dredged in breadcrumbs and fried. Makes sense to us. Grab the recipe. Okay. So, of course, right away, <laughs> people are writing, I'm Italian and I... And I assure you, this is not what a saltimbocca is supposed to look like, right? Yeah. And then you start reading the comments, like, this is Milanese, not saltimbocca. And then they say, like, uh, the translation is wrong, right? This is not a traditional saltimbocca. Mm. Blah, blah, blah. You know? This is not saltimbocca. Your translation is also incorrect. <laughs> Jum, but that's not saltimbocca. <laughs> Someone writes... It's uh, weird to name a, your random thing the name of a classic dish, right? Yeah. So that's the third problem. So they don't even do research, you know? 
they don't even do research about what they're making. Like, how many people did this go through? Like, the, oh, yeah. they had to cook it. Someone to take pictures, food styling, props. Like, <laughs> yeah, like there's so many people they're mentioning involved like, in this one picture. They're mentioning like four people here saying like, these four people contributed to making this dish. Plus, this is a huge ma like magazine, Bon Appetit. Bon Appetit Mac. Oh. <laughs> and they couldn't Google and say, <clears throat> is this a saltimbocca? <laughs> Look, Google saltimbocca, see? <laughs> you just go to images right away. Does it? Does that nah. thing from Bon Appetit look like... Man, saltimbocca looks... It's not breaded, first of all. It has... Yeah, it seems prosciutto on top and basil. And that's it. Like, it has nothing to do with it. And the worst thing is that's that they crazy. decided to, to not correct their mistake. So, more misinformation, right? That's true. Man, it's messed up, man. Eh? That's horrible. And they, 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 they didn't care. Like, yeah, okay, whatever. Let's just leave it like that. There's no, oh, sorry. Yeah, we just made this up. <laughs> yeah, like, it's okay. Like, in general, like, it's okay to make mistakes. Yeah, right? Like, but the more important thing is that you recognize your mistake yeah, and they don't care. you correct it. And that's it. Because Man, we're humans. Like, 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 bon we make appetit. mistakes. Like, they probably work in a huge building. Like, let's see. Bon Appetit Mag HQ. Let's see. Let's see where they work at. But, but Aura, if you if you're doing something like you have a big publication or something like, I would I would trust them to be accurate because they are professionals oh, for what they're doing. You know, like. But they're like on the nest. Oh, okay, that's why it's garbage. Like they're part of a bigger company. Uh, that is garbage. They're the ones that also manage like Pitchfork. You know, ah, like Pitchfork yeah, works on yeah, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, Pitchfork is a music magazine. Yeah, music magazine. But they're under the same parent company as Bon Appetit. <sighs> well. But that's sad. Seriously, that's sad because, like, I mean, I think it's good that you have these bigger publications because you have more reach on, like, your audience and a lot of people there. But if it's going to this direction, that's... Yeah, but... That's not good. Man, they have like 2.8 million followers, you know? And they're spreading lies. <laughs> Imagine the, not, a person's going to see a, mil a milanesa and they're going to be like, oh yeah, that's the saltimbocca. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> I saw in Bon Appetit Mag. <laughs> yeah, of course. Like, if you imagine you've been following this magazine through your whole life. And yeah, then, exactly. then you're like, no, oh, yeah, this, I trust this them. is terrible. No, no. I'm, I'm really shocked. So those are the three problems. What were they? Oh, yeah. One, making... Oh, yeah. Making simple dishes difficult. Yes. <laughs> Two, renaming dishes, like already existing dishes. Mm. Or three, putting the wrong name on a dish. <laughs> the three sins of... <laughs> <laughs> big publications or YouTube channels. Yes. Man, these people are swimming in money. Can't they take some time to just like, you know? Like, yeah, I, I, like, like put some effort on what you're just, doing. Just make sure that what you, you publish is true. Like not publish garbage, false information. I don't know. Like, I, I think all of that is pretty bad. It's really bad. It's really bad. So don't support these people. No, seriously. No. <laughs> support independent. <laughs> yeah, independent people who are really who actually making care the about effort. publications. Yes, I, I mean about publication. Yeah, who actually care about food, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that, well, there was a lot of information. <laughs> I, I think I think we've gone through all the important stuff. I mean, we have a lot more stuff, but I think we probably should use this for our next podcast. Yes. Like we have a huge list on a on on, on, on a whiteboard. <laughs> Our whiteboard is massive. But I think th this is pretty solid for this podcast. Yes, <laughs> lots to think about. So thank you for listening to Food Aesthetics Barcelona podcast number thank you. six. Say stop. We're an ain't stop. <laughs> no, I'm not saying what? that. We are not stopping. <laughs> uh, food Aesthetics never stop. <laughs> And thank you to everyone who contributed for Unwind, BCN, our, our food you. guide. We love you. Everyone who contributed 
and, and, and got their guide and supported our crowdfunding campaign. Thank you so much. You are amazing and we are forever thankful and we, we will hope do... to deliver soon. <laughs> yes, and we will do the best work ever. With our food guide. Yes. Ongoing Barcelona food guide. <laughs> Guide for the best places in exactly. Gracia. In Gracia. It's, just, it's crazy how many places you can visit in Gracia. Uh, There's like hundreds. We need to have and it's a, a neighborhood. We, have an, we need to have another <laughs> podcast just like going through the, some, some of the things when we have the physical yeah, guide. When it's like, printed, we can go through it, definitely. I, I can't wait. I can't wait. Okay, so follow us on Food Asterix VCN. Uh, where? On Instagram, for the Cedric VCN. <laughs> I spaced out. For the Cedric VCN, Instagram. For the Cedric VCN, Facebook. For the Cedric VCN, SoundCloud. Our podcast is in iTunes and also for the Cedric VCN.com, our website. Yes. And I think that's it, no? Yes. So thank you for listening to us and we'll do Come another back. podcast soon. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully in less than four weeks. <laughs> We're doing one per month. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Soon. Soon. We can do it. Yes. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.